Hey everybody, welcome back to Warpaint Off-Road. Rust removal is a really big deal. It is the car guy's arch nemesis. No, God, please, no, no! Whether you're building Jeeps or axles or other car parts or you're getting things out of junkyards, you're gonna have to remove some rust and there's a super easy way to do it. I'm gonna show you, so let's get to it. When you're building Jeeps or anything old, rust is involved, like I said a minute ago. But this axle actually looks pretty clean until you get there. The center section of this 14 bolt axle has got a lot of rust. The axle tubes, everything else seems okay, but the lower half or so of the diff cover actually had rust inside of it. I'm gonna reuse the carrier inside of this axle, replace all the spider gears and all that kind of stuff in there with a, with a Yukon Grizzly locker. But I'm gonna try to save the carrier. These 14 bolt carriers wind up actually being about 500 bucks in the aftermarket when you wanna buy a replacement. I'd like to not do that. So with a couple of bucks at your local grocery store, your local hardware store, and a car battery, we're actually gonna remove the rust using science. No matter what metal part you are trying to remove the rust off of, you're going to obviously have to uninstall it and you're going to have to make sure it's clean and free of oil. I removed the ring gear off of this center section and then separated it with a mallet. Step number one, five gallon bucket of water. You're going to need super wash soda. I get the Arm & Hammer stuff. It works really well. Now we're going to take a precise measurement because everything we do in science has to be precise, right? Nice and precise. Here, I, I've got an experiment for you. Safety glasses on. Maybe we'll get a little more of that stuff in there. Now, you don't have to worry about mixing it into the water because the electricity is going to do that for you. Number two, you need your parts. Now, those parts should be relatively clean from oil. If there's any remaining oil left on it, it'll kind of prevent uh, what we're going to do here with the water from touching it and it'll, it'll slow the process and delay it. So make sure it's relatively clean. You obviously wanna make sure it fits in that bucket. If you have to use a tote because it's a little bit of a bigger piece of steel, that's fine too, it'll work just the same. You're also gonna need electricity. Now be smart with the electric because electric and water, when you're a human being that wants to be breathing in 10 minutes, usually doesn't go all that well. So be really smart and you're doing this at your own risk. Do it in a safe, ventilated area. I'll talk about why it has to be ventilated later. But you're gonna just have to be really, really smart about all of this. You're also gonna need a battery charger, something for a car battery. Now, if your battery charger is not one of those old school dummy chargers and it actually has some microcomputer chips in it, you're also gonna need yourself a car battery, and here's why. Old school battery chargers actually will charge no matter what. There's no safeties involved. But if you have today's smart chargers and they don't detect that they're actually plugged into a battery, they'll actually shut themselves off as a safety. So if you have a smart charger like I do, you're gonna have to wind up hooking it to a battery and then you need jumper cables. Now steel wire is normally fine, but I went out and got something a little bit heavier because my part was heavier. You just need something that's gonna conduct electricity this point, we're gonna take our car part, lower it down in water. I actually like to wrap mine around a piece of wood, just stabilizes it, makes sure it doesn't go anywhere. Then we're gonna take our sacrificial piece of steel. I'm just using a piece of angle here. We're gonna put that now in the water. That sacrificial piece of steel or anode is gonna be what actually attracts the electrons to it and we're gonna put some electricity on it in just a little bit. Now it's extremely important to make sure that your anode, your sacrificial piece of steel, and your cathode, the piece that's gonna be giving up the electrons, or in this case, rust, is actually not touching each other in the water. There's a little bit of space between them. I know you can't see it, but it's gonna help us get this whole thing going. Public service announcement before you connect the electricity. When you connect the electricity, the reaction with everything that you added into that water is gonna create hydrogen and oxygen gases. You're gonna see some bubbles in just a couple of minutes. That hydrogen and oxygen gas is extremely flammable, 
So you guys do not want this in a closed space. Don't do this in your living room. Certainly don't do this in your bedroom. Make sure it's either in your garage or outside on a covered patio, away from anything flammable in an area that gets ventilation. It's extremely important. Between the electricity and those gases, this guys is really done at your own risk. Do not mess around. Make sure you know what you're doing. You're not children anymore. I didn't mind explaining photosynthesis to you when you were 12, but you're adults now, and this is an actual crisis. Got it? Safety glasses off, mother. So I only have a little ATV battery here, but it's gonna work. I said to you guys earlier that if you have one of these smart chargers like I have, you actually need to hook it up to a car battery. If you didn't have one of those smart chargers, you would simply take your positive, connect it to the piece you want to rust, your sacrificial piece of steel. You would connect the negative to the steel rod or the wire that's going to the part you want to de-rust. In this case, I had to take an extra step. I had to wind up hooking up my smart battery charger to the actual battery, then hook the jumper cables to it. With my positive connected, my negative connected, you can actually see all of those bubbles in there being released as that electricity is working. And that guys, in about 24 hours, I'll show you what it looks like. And that one piece of steel should be pretty clean. The other one is gonna look like it came off of the Titanic. All right guys, we're back. It's been about 24 hours. Let's go check out the soup. Let's see what it looks like. All right, as you can see, it's still doing its thing and bubbling in there. Looks pretty nasty. I've unhooked all the jumper cables at this point. We're gonna pull out our sacrificial piece of steel first. Now you saw what this looked like yesterday when I put it in there. Look at it now. Guys, instantly rusted, right? That's pretty crazy that that happened to a piece of new steel. I mean, it looked like that yesterday when we put it in there and this is what it looks like now. 24 hours later. Yesterday, as I had said, I had one of those smart chargers. I ran it to a battery, and then I ran the battery with a set of jumper cables to the soup bucket. Well, the smart charger was still too smart and wasn't working for more than, a, than 15, 20 minutes at a time, and then it would shut itself off and go into a safety mode. I guess it was not happy with the battery and the setup. So I did contact a friend, got one of the old school dummy chargers in here, hooked that up and we ran it. We're gonna pull it out, see what it looks like. Lift out our piece of steel. Once you remove your auto part from the soup, it's almost immediately going to flash rust. It's a really good idea to spray it down with WD-40 and displace all the water and protect it. All right, let me clean it up with some WD-40. I'll get right back to you guys. This is one half of that carrier that I had put in there before. And if you remember, most of that carrier on this outside edge was okay. It was just a section of it that wasn't. You can see how like right here, it's got that shine to it all the way around until we get to the area that was rusted again. It has some pitting in there, right? You can kind of see it. Even a little bit of the shine came back. It has some pitting in there. Um, but again, all that rust, that big chunky rust. If you remember this spot between the two halves of the carrier was really bad. And it's just, it's just some pitting. It's nothing crazy anymore in there. I mean, you compare it to a spot that didn't have any rust and you can see it's, it, there's not a giant difference in it anyway, because it's not one of these machine surfaces. And this is the other half of that housing, right? Same thing, nice and shiny in there on all those machine surfaces. We go to the outside, right? Has that shine on it all the way around until you get to where it was really bad, which is right here. And again, some pitting on there, nothing too crazy. Pretty awesome way to remove some rust. And you guys saw that rust was pretty bad. So if your rust is minor, Guys, this is gonna take care of it no problem and be super cheap. Anyway guys, I got a lot of tips and tricks on this channel. Hopefully you stick around. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, share this with your friends. And if you ever wanna learn how to build a big beautiful four x four on giant wheels and tires, stick around. Cause I'm building a CJ in this garage right now that's gonna be on a 43 inch tire with custom one ton axles, custom suspension. I'm even cutting the body in half twice and stretching it. It's gonna be pretty cool. But anyway, guys, get out there, make sure you build something.